Yeah. That, that you look at your life and and you have, as Holly said, you've been sort of terribly honest and there are moments there do you think, oh my goodness me, you know, so this, this must have been very emotionally difficult for you to revisit. You've talked about your stepfather who sexually abused you at a very, very young age. Um, you've, uh, you've said that you couldn't really write the book until your till your mother wasn't necessarily around to, to read it, but that in her latter years, she said she knew about that. Well, you know, it, it's very clear in the book. It, it, it isn't, it, I mean, there was something, there was something that she ad admitted to me at the end, but that she tried, it, it is this, this constant trying to reach each other that she and I both were. Um, it's a handed down history, uh, both from my grandmother and my great grandmother, of missed communication of hurts and wounds that you never talk about so they never heal. Mm. And when you, you think you've tried, didn't I try? I did try, but it's so, when you grow up, and, and certainly they did in the generation of women they came from, mm. we're really revealing your innermost pains and shameful parts that feel shameful are almost impossible to verbalize. So it is also ho hopefully a, a, a picture of that handed down heritage mm. um, that's very difficult to get over. But that sort of acceptance of yourself, that sort of pattern of abuse, that kind of getting used to the way things were back then. I mean, it's kind of very current now. You talk about in the book, um, The Casting Couch, that mm -hmm. there, was, there was a very well-known director that forced you to kiss him and that asked you to show him your breasts. Um, Writing that, there was a line in there that you say that it's 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 a pattern and that you don't see yourself as being a victim in that. Is that all part of that same thing where you just get used to it? No, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying that people should get used to it. Uh, what was, I, the reason I even wrote about that episode and some and several other episodes, it's that they and the, the um, circumstances that I kept finding myself in were preformed ruts in my road. In other words, I had a survival mechanism yeah. in my childhood. And I, as people do, I would find myself in situations that were similar to my childhood. Mm. And I could, was blinded to them because That's I was so used cool. to it. Yeah. I was, you know, you head towards or you, you find yourself in situations that are repeating themselves because they are comfortable, not because they are productive or, mm. um, or good places to be. Mm. I was used to it. I, I knew so what that was. It. I had been there before. I grew up in it. Yeah. And um, we should touch upon... Burt Reynolds, this very important we relationship, <laughs> yeah, um, because um, what, what did what was because it was Smokey and the Bandit. You looked at it, and you, I think you wrote in your diary, "This is a terrible, shocking script." But oh, um, oh piece of poop. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say when he phoned you? First of all, the first contact you had down the phone. I think he said something like, "I know this is a piece of poop." That did begin it, but he said. Um, he said he thought we could um, sort of ad lib our way through it. And um, oddly enough, he told me I had I had just done a f my first sort of film, and I thought because I, I was wondering why does he want? It was impossible for me to get a role in a film, and and yet he was calling me to be in this film, and he and I couldn't figure out why. And then he said he's always he always loved me in Gidget, and I thought he loved me in Gidget, and that's why he wants to have me sit next to him and for a whole film, you know. So it you know. It, but when you met him, when you met mm -hmm. up, it was, and there was an instantaneous, I think is the word you use, connection. Yes, absolutely. I, I think I used that very word, mm -hmm. in, in instantaneous and, and intense. And I also said we were a, a perfect um, match of flaws. Right. Um, we went together very well, but not necessarily for the right reasons. Yeah. Um, we just, both of us felt, <laughs> and... Um, it, again, it, it was a, a preformed rut in my road where I, I say in the book many times, if I could have been different, would he have been different? Mm -hmm. um, and I think you get lost in the reality of the day you're reacting to things that didn't yeah. really, ha that didn't just happen. But he was they very a long controlling time ago. though, wasn't he? Um, he, he was who he was and a man of his, of his time and needed, uh, the women that he was with to represent him in a certain way. And, um, 
but would he have been different if I could have said, don't do that. I don't like it. Mm. Yeah. I, but I couldn't. I couldn't I be myself. I, could, I was absent from, I, I was behaving the way I was taught. And that is to be loved, I had to disappear. Yeah. So I disappeared. He uh, he passed away. I think it was just twelve weeks before um, before the book came out. I think it was yeah. four days. Before. Only oh my four gosh. days. It was very very close. It was kind of horrifying yeah. um, that it was so close. And I I certainly never wanted to hurt him any more than I already had. Uh, and um, I knew this this book would hurt him. Mm. Yeah. Even though I I try to paint him as a um, colorful human being that he was. Um, so I, I don't know, he, um, he will always be in my heart and my history. Mm -hmm. yeah. He will never not be there.